This is the Carlisle's Pix Technology channel. A little short video for you. I'm actually working on some videos for my motorcycle channel, the Your Fast Life motorcycle channel, and I'm just completed the shoot and I'm about to start the preparation for post production, which is the editing phase. I want to show you guys a really cool tool from Adobe called Adobe Bridge. Adobe Bridge is a really cool media management tool. It's a great way for you to organize your files. Like you can see right here, I can view files in different formats so I can look at it in a film strip view. See, it's like a film strip down here. And you got the little thumbnails up there. I can also make the thumbnails bigger. A lot of different options in terms of how I want to see things. All right. Now, if I were to select just one of these images, now I can see that. Now, this is kind of a tiny screen. It's a laptop screen, but imagine on a computer, this could be a nice big display. I can also scrub through and see various parts of the video that I want to take a look at. I can see my horrible framing. I should have been aiming down more. Look at this. I'm cutting off a lot of the bike a lot. Amateur hour. Oh, I love that frame. I think I can actually take a screenshot. Oh, wow. Why did it move? I think I can actually take snapshots, too. That's nice right there. Um, there's this thing. Get photos from camera. I don't want to do that. How do I do a frame grab on this? I'm pretty sure there's a way to do that. Let's see. Tools. This is not what this video is about, but this is a really great frame. I want to I wanna capture that. Let's see. View. Edit. I'm not sure about how to do that, so I'll have to figure that out another time and stick to what the video is about here. So I love this man. This is a great shot. Anyway, um, so you can look at files different ways. You can look at the metadata, so I can see all the details, what time it was uh, shot, and the size of the files, ratings, and dates, and other codes that'll show up there. And there's also this output here. You can see you're seeing. Uh, all these different settings. It's set to autoplay. That's 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 an option that you can change. But what I wanted to show you in particular in this video is I want to show you the the batch renaming. So here's a this is a great thing that can help you in your workflow when you're working with a lot of different files. So you've shot all these all these video clips. They've got these names which don't really mean anything for you. So you know it's GoPro this, GoPro that. Um, you want it to be something that makes sense so you know what this is. It doesn't get lost on your hard drive with all your other footage. So you can you can do a right click rename in, in Windows Explorer, but that's kind of really simple. There's not much you can do there. But here, let's see the real power of some a real tool. So here there's a batch rename under tools. So group tools, batch rename, and I'll show you how to use this. So once it loads up, you're gonna have this little interface here where you can do a lot of different things. So I'm gonna rename them in the same folder. You can move them to another folder if you want to, copy to another folder. So you have the original still, and you have the copies as well. Um, so for example, right now I'm reading directly off of the card, straight from the camera, in my uh, SD card slot. So I could just rename and copy them to the hard drive on the machine if I wanted to. In this case, I just want to rename them in the same folder that they're in right now. Now, I already decided what I wanted to call them. So these are different options that you can add and subtract. So I've added these three things to the name. So you can have a plus sign there, you can add things and subtract things. So what I wanted to do was I wanted to start the name. This is what this is what the new names are going to be. The new name is going to begin with text, then date and time, then text, then a sequence number. I chose these options. I can remove these if I want to. Let's say I don't want the sequence number. I can go ahead and remove that just with the negative uh, sign there. And how did I add it? I added it by clicking on the plus. So let's go ahead and click on the plus. That's how I added each one. So that was sequence. So look at. Let me show you the options. You have text. Uh, new extension, current file name, so you can actually preserve the current file name and add things before and after it. Um, you have the uh, preserved file name, sequence number, sequence letter, date, time, metadata, folder name, uh, string substitution. So you got all these different options. In this case, I want to do sequence number, which is just going to number the files. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Right? It's just going to number them. I've also so I've started with VR6, which is name of the rider. ZX10R, which is the name of the bike that he's on. I put a space there as well, space between those two. Um, then I put an underscore just to separate 2K, which is the resolution that I shot this at, and then another underscore to separate what comes next, which is the date. 
day format, you got all these different options. I chose the hours, hours, minutes, minutes, seconds, seconds. And then I added a, a text, which is just a dash, or underscore rather, then a sequence number. I can specify how many digits. Now, I don't have more than 100 files, so I don't need more than two digits. I'm just going to do two digits on the, on the sequence number. And then you have these options here for Mac users. And here's a preview. So file starts with this. And then when it's done, it's going to be called this. So you can see how it works. You can do a preview on all the files. So you can see all of them. This is what, these are what all the new names are going to be. I can also look at things like the numbering makes sense. So for example, you can see the numbering starts at 58, 59, 60, 61. So it's going up in the original file names. And here you can see the new file names are going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So it's going in the correct order. You see the name that I have, VR6, space ZX10R, space 2K, um, uh, underscore, then the you know 13, that's going to be 1, 13, that's 1, 13, and then 32, that's 32 seconds. And then the sequence number is going up. And you can see I have a total of 13 files. The final sequence number is 13, which makes more sense than 70. 70 tells me nothing, right? It's not 70 files. It's just numbering based on, I think, um, every image you take has a, it increments one. So this number and the last number has nothing to do with what I did today. It's just incrementing. You know what I mean? Like, unless, unless this was the first time I used the camera, then it's not really going to make any sense. But this makes sense. I know I have 13 files. This is the sixth file. This is the 11th file, and so on and so forth. Um, I can export this to CSV. It's a really cool option. And I'm happy with this, so it's telling me 13 files we process. I can just go ahead and go rename. It's on, it's, a, it's on a laptop here. This laptop is a little slow, so it might take a little while to do it. There you go. It's done. So now all the files have now been renamed. Now they make sense. Now what I can do is I can further uh, rename these so you can know by scene what these are. So I know this one is going to be a bunch of uh, flybys. So I can go ahead and click right there, and I can go and this information VR6 applies to every single clip. So that's not the priority. The priority would be in terms of the naming is what is this particular clip about beyond the topic of all of them, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say um, uh, flybys space. I don't know if it's one word, two words, whatever, and then hit enter. So now we know what that, that particular clip is about. It's being used by another Okay, that's because it's, it's actually, I think it's playing it back. Let's do that again. It automatically plays. That's because I said it that way. You can tell it not to autoplay. So let's just say flyby. Let's do one word. I don't know if that's, whatever. I don't know if that's even a real word. Enter. That should work because it's not playing this time. Hopefully. Fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. You click on another. There you go. So now we have the first one called flybys, and so on and so forth. You could go and name all of them um, so that you know by, by seeing what these actual clips are about. And that's all there is to it. This is Adobe Bridge. You're watching Carlos Pix Technology Channel. If this video helped you out, definitely thumbs up the video, subscribe, and thank you for watching. And i got to figure out how to do the snapshot. I know I can do it in Premiere, but I'm hoping you can do snapshots in here as well. Just, just a little quick note. There's another way you can do snapshots, not using Adobe Bridge. I, I don't know if Adobe Bridge can do it, but there is this tool called the Snipping Tool. So you can pretty much get a snapshot of anything that's on the screen. So if I just do a uh, cancel and I do a film strip and I find my frame that I want, a little slow, a little slow. Okay, let's just say this is the frame that I wanted. I can go and use this snipping tool and just say new and I can go ahead and select whatever it is I want. And that's it. I now have this saved. I can save it. Well, it's not saved yet. I can save it as a JPEG or whatever. And there's your screenshot. So it's that simple. But I think there's a way to do it in Bridge. I'm going to figure it out and perhaps do a video about it if you guys are interested. But um, that is it for this video. You are watching not your Fast Life Motorcycle channel. That is my motorcycle channel. But you are watching Carl's Big Technology channel. Thumbs up the video. Share it. Subscribe. And thank you for watching.